Visiting Kaunas feels like travelling back in time. First impressions on a winter visit to the city in south-central Lithuania reveal a fairly bleak scene. But seek shelter from the cold and you'll discover quirky interiors worthy of film sets. From modernist cafes to Soviet-era bookshops, mid-century museums to ornamental pharmacies. Kaunas's architectural riches lie not in any one great building, but in the collective, with thousands of modernist structures packed into the compact city of 300,000. Uh, when you walk uh, uh, around Kaunas, uh, you never know what to expect uh, uh, around the corners. If you take each building, uh, uh, probably it uh, won't appear on the like a front page on books on about modernism. But uh, when you speak as out as a whole, it makes an impression. Kaunas has remained largely beyond the tourist trail, but that could be all about to change. The city has a bid-in with UNESCO for heritage status and was crowned one of Europe's capitals of culture for 2022, shared with Esch in Luxembourg. It's a title that many here are taking seriously. Not very often in, in the European capital of cultures, the architecture is involved, or especially the modernist architecture. So that uh, already shows that uh, for Kona's people it's very important. Monocle visited the city that is stuffed full of historic treasures, with wide boulevards, Baroque spires, and residents who are passionate about preserving and honouring the past in order to build a brighter future. So this whole building is being renovated bit by bit every year. And um, yeah, we, we are trying to um, you know, keep all the authentic details. When we saw this apartment from this house from inside, we decided to buy immediately in this 10 in 10 minutes. <laughs> almost three years to make it look as it should have been in 1929 when this building was erected. The face of the city and its design details tell the story of the birth of a nation and struggle for independence from empire and occupation. So sit back and settle in for a tour of Lithuania's second city. Kaunas's historic roots run deep, with medieval features dotted around the old town. But it's the new town that is drawing attention. Cultural protection status encircles a grid-like network of streets, intersected by a central and pedestrianised artery, which cleaves Kaunas in half. Film and TV scouts have been drawn to the city, which has been a backdrop for the likes of HBO series Chernobyl and Catherine the Great starring Helen Mirren. Wander the streets and it's clear to see why. It's like an open-air museum of uh, modernist architecture. Look to this direction and all what you are seeing is like all modernist buildings. And you just, what you just need to change is like clothes and uh, cars and that's it. <laughs> you will have a feeling of the interwar period. After separating from the Russian Empire in 1918, Kaunas became the temporary capital of the new nation of Lithuania. Vilnius was returned as the seat of power in 1939, but not before the interwar period saw rapid development in Kaunas, just as the modernism movement was sweeping Europe. Architecture was key to the city's transformation, and in 2015 a European heritage label was awarded to parts of the city built in the interwar period. Interwar period is considered to be Lithuania's golden era, era when modern Lithuanian state and modern Lithuanian uh, nation was uh, formed. Kaunas is a symbol of, of that golden era for, for any Lithuanian. Of, so every building that resembles that era is somewhat special for, for, every, for every Lithuanian. It was during this brief period that great swathes of Kaunas were built in a boxy Lithuanian version of modernism. A new look and feel was needed for a new nation. After freeing ourselves from Tsarist uh, Russian Empire, I started to think about some local distinctive architecture, Lithuanian architecture. And of course, it's not so an easy task to, to, to make architecture like a national and uh, Kona's central post office. It's the most brilliant example. 
and if you let's go inside and see the tilings of the floor so it's according to the national textile on the facade you can see some imitation of wood carving Visit other iconic buildings from the interwar period and themes begin to emerge. Terrazzo flooring, geometric folk motifs, curved lines emulating steamships and arrows as emblems of progress. Many details have been preserved. The library, which used to serve as a bank, still has some of the old vaults and the municipality has an original and working elevator. These buildings became important symbols of renewal as the city rid itself of its imperial past. The most impressive edifice is undoubtedly Christ's Resurrection Church, which sits on a hill overlooking the city. The building temporarily became a TV and radio factory during the Soviet occupation, which lasted from 1940 to 1990 and changed the makeup of the city. Many buildings were nationalised and their original features erased forever. Petras Gedimovicius and Karolis Banis purchased an apartment in a block from 1929 and have painstakingly restored it to its former grandeur. When we entered to this apartment in 2016, December, we saw a lot of authenticity, a parquet, doors and everything, and we decided that we want to buy it. Why? Because, well, because of the historical reasons well, these old houses were nationalized during the Soviet occupation and all these beautiful apartments were divided into two or three. So most of the apartments lost the original layout. Most of these uh, apartments are destroyed. So when we entered here, we saw a, an authentic layout, which is a fantastic thing here. And um, it allows us to understand how people were living here till the Second World War. Everything from the door hinges to light switches were meticulously researched. Period furniture was sourced and restored, and polychromatic testing revealed the original colour of the walls. The first room where the polychromic uh, researchers started to work was the dining room. It's the first room we furnished, and you know, it's like, you know, the, the first baby. <laughs> and through polychromic research and working with uh, other specialists like uh, professional painters, they recreated it and now what you can see is like 99.9% accurate to what it used to be. The apartment is now open to the public as the Art Deco Museum and sits a stone's throw away from the central boulevard. Head outside and stroll along it, and you'll bear witness to Kaunas's history in microcosm, starting with a neo-Baroque church built in the late 1800s under Russian Tsarist rule. When the country became part of the Eastern Bloc after the Second World War, the street was renamed Stalin Avenue. After 1990 and the fall of communism, however, the original name was restored, fittingly translating as Freedom Avenue. More than 30 years on, the ever-evolving city seems to be entering a new chapter, moving towards the brighter future aspired to by its architects throughout the ages.